1995 Beaver Marquis motorhome we recently purchased. Uh, got it home now. We uh, had to carry it to the tire shop right before we purchased it. That was our first stop. It needed new tires. They were pretty, uh, pretty, pretty bad shape, out of out of date, and it had been sitting a while. So wanted to get some uh, new shoes on it before we took it or drove it anywhere. But got that taken care of. Got it home, and just wanted to start knocking out things that I had in my mind and on my to-do list to get done. One of the first things I wanted to do was work on this front. It's uh, really faded. It's it's two different colors and it looks like they may have tried to buff part of it. And it anyhow, so my plan I had come up with or the plan I implemented was I ordered a gallon of Plasti Dip paint uh, from Dip Your Car. What I used was a real dark blue. As you'll see later, it, it looks black, but in certain light, it does look like dark blue. One thing I like about the Plasti Dip paint is you just tape off your main area and then like the uh, lights and the fog lights, I didn't have to tape that off. I could just paint it and later after it dried, come back and uh, that, that peels right off. Did that, also uh, pulled the front emblem off, polished it up, and cut out some 3-in reflective uh, material and put in it, so it really pops at night. So I thought that really turned out good. The next thing I wanted to tackle was the roof. As you can tell from the pictures, it was pretty rough looking. Uh, wasn't no leaks, wasn't anything major structurally wrong with it, mainly just dirty and a lot of obsolete materials up there or equipment. So that was the first thing I did. It was remove the old solar panels, the old satellite, and the TV antenna that wasn't working, couldn't get any channels on it. So cleaned all that off, and any through the uh, roof penetrations I had, we sanded them, came back with fiberglass cloth if it was a big hole, fiberglass to over it. Also, any screw holes that we had, we went back with thick and epoxy, filled those holes up, and uh, did that and then sanded that down. While we were doing that, or uh, the front marker lights were in bad shape. They were very brittle. Uh, as you can see from the picture, they were falling apart. I tried to remove, the first one I tried to remove just fell apart. So replaced all of those while I was on that front cap working. The horns had two different labels on them. Uh, so I went in and made me some labels for it using my Cricut machine. Also, uh, didn't go back with the old wine guard, wing guard, however you pronounce it, antenna. Went back with a King Air, immediately got tons of channels, really happy with it and how easy it was to install. As you can see here in the pictures, that front cap looks a lot better with the new marker lights, the new labels on the antennas. I thought that turned out very nice. There's the final results of the roof redo. I used Rust-Oleum top side marine grade paint, couple of coats, did that, and then we came back and uh, I put in uh, Unistrut racks for my solar panels so I could add more or take them off if I need to easily. Uh, they're, they're put on with screws and 5200, uh, sealed very good. You could probably rip the roof off before you got one of those solar panels off. I think it turned out better than I expected. Looks really good. After we got the roof done, wanted to move down and work on the propane tank. Uh, that's what we were using to uh, heat our hot water. So before I refilled it, I wanted to make sure it was safe to uh, fill. So we pulled it out, went over it, inspected it. It had no major pitting of any kind. So did a good cleaning, light sanding, and then repainted it with some marine grade uh, paint and relabeled it and reinstalled it. That was a couple of, I guess that was about a 10 or 12 hour project altogether, scattered out over a couple of the days working on it after work, but turned out really nice and I feel a lot more comfortable using the tank now. Next up, I fixed the uh, grab handle. I found it in a drawer. It was broken, so put it all back together, had to do some repairs on it put a uh, LED lights in it that did come that way from the factory so I added some LED lights put it all back together installed it then realized I had put red red LED lights instead of blues so took everything back off put the blue LED lights in it turned out really nice 
also worked on the tail lights. They were sort of uh, faded looking, dirty, just aged, uh, sun baked. So lightly sanded those with some uh, real fine grit sandpaper. Put a clear coat on them. They turned out really nice. Then I uh, moved up to the camera. It had been giving me issues. Uh, it was washed out. You couldn't adjust it on the monitor. So put in a new camera and a new 10 inch camera screen display. I don't have a picture of it here. I need to get a picture. You'll see it on uh, later videos on the interior. So fix that, fiberglass that hole in, weatherproofed it, put a new camera in and replaced uh, some of the back marker lights. Still got one to go. I was short one, so still got some more to go to replace that. And we got our Blue Ox towing uh, kit in and wired it up for the trailers, ran a new trailer plug, new wiring, and got that tidied up and ready to go to tow the Jeep. Next up was an important project. We wanted to uh, uh, trace down some of our air leaks, get them fixed. So we knew the airbags were probably old and need to be replaced. We ordered all new airbags, uh, hired a local uh, mobile RV mechanic to come out. Very reasonable guy, does an excellent job. So once I got the airbags in, he came out, replaced them. Uh, they, as you can see in these pictures, they were definitely in bad shape and needed to be replaced. So did that, got all that back together. It still had an air leak leaking a lot of air, and then we found uh, this little hose here. I think he told me that went to one of the airbags or may went to the Jake brake. So fixed that up and that solved most of our air leaks. Got ready to start the coach, went to hook up the battery cables and then had a major battery explosion. Uh, I thought it had almost broke my fingers, but they were all right. I had a wrench laying in there. It slung it halfway across the yard. As you can tell from the batteries, they totally exploded uh, that's I had one to explode with me one time before when I was younger but uh, I from now on I will be very cautious when hooking up jumper cables uh, especially somewhere like that where you got to get down in there close to the battery very lucky didn't have any major injuries uh, to my hands my eyes or my face so valuable valuable lesson I learned there with that so uh, needed new house batteries. Uh, I had a source to get some of these uh, 190 amp hour batteries. Uh, I used them in my boat uh, that I had. So uh, put those in there. I think they'll work out great. Uh, you know, let me know your thoughts on those batteries. Uh, they're very heavy is the problem, but awesome uh, battery life. Uh, I haven't ran them down yet, but I haven't done any in a long, long time. Uh, study time studies on them but uh, so hopefully those work out and maybe they won't explode on me next I wanted to work on the rims they were bothering me of being uh, so dirty and faded so uh, used some pro 040 that I got from uh, the TA travel center also bought some mother's uh, polish and a foam pad that goes in uh, a foam ball that goes in your drill Worked on these rims, uh, spent quite a bit of time on those, and when I was through, I coated them in wax. Uh, these pictures here, uh, the, as you can see, made a big difference. They looked good, and was glad I tackled that. It, it really made it uh, pop with those shiny rims. Little, little bit of labor, a little bit of elbow grease, but they turned out nice. Back to repairs that actually matter, the relays in the power area on the driver's side they were just shot they were rusted ordered replacements got those replaced that gave me peace of mind and decided to go do a road trip made it to the uh, truck stop right up the road from us not too far to get diesel fuel noticed it was starting to run a little hot couldn't figure out what it was got to looking went around back opened up the engine compartment noticed the belt was off so couldn't figure out what was going on it was dark so we called a diesel mechanic. He said, I can't get there tonight, get there tomorrow. So we sat at the truck stop all night, spent the night in the motor home in the truck stop. Next day, found out it was the harmonic balancer had come apart. I was able to slip a belt back on it to uh, get us back home. It was about four or five miles back to the house. Ordered a new one. It came in. The diesel mechanic guy came by and installed it for me. 
and so got us going, but glad it happened right there at the house. So our efforts weren't in vain, as you can tell from the pictures, it's looking pretty good. Still got a lot of little things to do. Uh, it's a, there's a picture of the rear, and then from the front, and you can see down the side, it looks like a different coach almost. It looks 100% uh, better. Uh, we added new headlights and fog lights. The factory lights uh, setup was very dim, couldn't hardly really see to drive at night. But now I've got, uh, I can light it up and see very well. It makes it a lot safer to drive at night. And then I decided to, uh, while I had my cricket machine out doing the horns, I made me a sticker and created me a beaver toolbox uh, to keep my tools in that I carry with me on the road. So I thought that turned out pretty nice. That's it for now for exterior repairs we've made. And our next video, I'll cover interior items we've upgraded or repaired or replaced. And I'll leave you with a list of things I've already fixed.